Right, what do we have in here? We have four exposed rolls of Super 8. I have a Kodachrome 40, a Boots Super 8, and a Kodak E160. I've also got a, a roll of this made in the uh, former USSR. So I'm going to do it in caffeinol. I'm going to mix washing soda, coffee, vitamin C. Then I'm going to put the Super 8 into this, which is a, a big developing tank that's not designed for doing Super 8, but I'm going to pull all the Super 8 out of this thing, put it into here with a litre of caffeinol, jiggle it around and then pour it out. Then I'm going to fix it with this Ilford fixer. And when it's all done, I'm going to dry it out and project it see what we get. So let's begin with making the caffeinol. In goes the vitamin C. The washing soda is such horrible stuff, you've got to make sure you don't get it on your skin. And also I found it's all caked and, and, and clumped up after being in the jar for a while. Also try not to inhale anywhere near it. Oh, it's all fizzing. Look at that. That's the washing soda and the vitamin C. Well, it's pissing down outside, so time for some nice coffee. So this is a changing bag that I got on eBay. It unzips at this end, so you put all your kit into there. And then at the other end, it's got these two cuffs, which are elasticated and you put your hands into them. So you can do everything by touch without worrying about exposing your film. Right, well, I'm gonna show you what goes on inside the changing bag. Bear in mind that all of this you're about to see is supposed to happen in complete darkness. So I have my developing tank. This one takes four rolls of 35 mil film and it's a bit unwieldy. I think I might get one that does three rolls, which is about this long. So inside the bag, take the top off and there's this long tube. Then I get my cassette. This is what I found works. You can just pull the Super 8 out and it'll come loose and it'll just come all the way out. You don't actually have to break the cassette, you don't have to do anything, you just pull it out. So what I do is inside the bag, I, I dangle it over the top and I just carefully pull the Super 8 out foot by foot. Try holding it by the sides of the film so you don't get fingerprints on it. Just pull it all out and into the tank until it's all full up. When it's all in there, I put this in, and I've got to get this on there, and this has got to line up exactly with that. And that's really difficult, because there's film all the way in there. Then I put the top back on, and it's ready to come out of the bag. So the film's all inside the tank now. One litre of caffeinol. And I'll start the stopwatch. I'm going to let it run for 20 minutes this time. I'm going to reuse my caffeinol this time. I'm going to see if I can manage to develop two films using the same one litre batch. I'm putting the stop bath in. Oh dear, oh, it's gone greenish grey. It actually, it's probably the Remjet off the film that's doing that. This is Ilford Rapid Fixer. Previously I did five minutes and that seemed to work. Now I've rinsed it out. That's the last rinse. And we'll see what we got here. Let's uh, look up to the light. Oh yeah, I see frames, I see lots of frames. Uh, I also see this this nasty black shit called Remjet, which uh, is a feature of Kodachrome 40. And I have to now rinse the entire thing with uh, cold water. But now I'm gonna hang it all up, dry it, and then project it, see what we got. Well, the first thing you notice is that this is a negative. The film was actually reversal film, which means it ought to produce a positive if processed properly. But because I did this all in coffee in my bathroom uh, and I missed out a couple of crucial steps because they just made it more complicated, it created a negative. 
when you see it positive here it's because I flipped it in Adobe Premiere which is a lot easier than mucking around with potassium permanganate and bleach and stuff. I will be making a uh, true reversal positive film in the future so watch out for that. Some of it's a bit out of focus but that may be because I didn't focus properly when I was filming it or possibly I didn't focus properly when I was projecting it or possibly I wasn't focusing properly when I was filming the projection. So there's a lot of um, focusing issues you have to uh, look out for. It's kind of yellowish sepia toned and I don't know if that's because of the coffee or because of the age of the film or just the way the film comes out. When it's flipped of course the yellow goes to blue. I could use the computer to get rid of all the blue and just make it simple monochrome but I quite like the blue tone. It also has numerous scratches, stains and all the stuff that Super 8 is famous for. Some of the scratches and stuff might be because when I was hanging it up to dry I dropped it on the floor several times. But of course it all adds to the Super 8 look. Now this is the Kodachrome 40 which is a colour stock but because I don't have the correct colour staining chemicals from Kodak, in fact no one does, all Kodachrome 40 shot these days comes out in black and white or blue and white. It's a miracle you can get any image whatsoever out of this really. The black stuff on the film you see there is probably leftover remjet that didn't get removed by the, uh, the simple washing. You can't get it all. It does add a nice overlay to the film if you like an abstract effect. Kodachrome didn't actually come out as well as the Soviet stuff. There's a triumph for uh, Soviet engineering over Western capitalism right there. Also, once you've scanned it and got it on the computer, you can play around with the contrast and the brightness just to get a clearer image. If you completely bump up the contrast and brightness, you get something like this, which is a really nice look. Makes it look really, really old. In my next film, I'm going to try and, and develop the Super 8 so that it creates a positive image so it can actually be projected without having to reverse it on a computer. That involves stuff like potassium permanganate and bleach and taking the film out halfway through to expose it to the light. It's a more complicated process but I'll give it my best shot. So that's it. Film is not dead. Keep using it. Develop it at home. Get cheap stuff. Don't let the computers win. And with that, uh, until next time, goodbye.